You know, I'm not one for cliches, but dogs really are man's best friend. I get it if you aren't a dog person, it isn't for everyone, but a dog in your home just makes you feel loved and needed. This is why so many dog owners go above and beyond for their furry friends. And while dog needs like people needs aren't universal, I know that some people out there want to pamper their pooch as much as possible. But what does that entail exactly? Well, for starters, your dog needs privacy. Yes, believe it or not, as much as they love to be with you 20 hours a day, they do use those other four hours for themselves. Giving a dog their own space can really help them feel both comfortable and safe. This can work by either making their kennel feel like their own space, a dog bed and toys help, or just by putting all their essentials in an area reserved just for them. This is especially important in a multi-pet home. Dogs like to feel like they have their own space where they can feel safe. And I know some of you, probably a lot of you, let your dog sleep in your bed, and that's perfectly okay if not encouraged. Dogs love sleeping with you because it means you're sharing your private space with them. But maintaining a balance is important too. You don't want your dog to feel isolated, but you want to create boundaries for their own comfort. When establishing their own space, if your dog frequently sleeps with you, try setting them up in your bedroom. That way your dog can sleep on the bed or just feel close to you if they like. What? Boundaries? I thought this was supposed to be about things that dogs like. Yes, believe it or not, dogs actually like having boundaries. Giving your dog treats without any sort of prompting or praising them for just being the wonderful pups they are may feel nice to you, but it actually is pretty confusing for your dog. They don't understand why it's happening and it can actually cause stress. So remember, it may be hard to establish these boundaries sometimes, but it's better for your dog. So now that we understand how to create a space for your dog, let's talk about activities. All pets need to be engaged to be healthy and happy. Some pet owners are quick to write off pets as liking to lounge around all day, but in reality, most pets are understimulated. And honestly, this isn't a hard problem to rectify. Dogs love to travel. And I don't mean you'd need to take your dog on vacation, although honestly, I'm sure you can both use one. Dogs like to be with you. You are their world, and when you go out to do errands, they don't like not knowing where you are. Taking your dog shopping, to the post office, anywhere you need to go, your dog will be happy to go with you. And I know what you're thinking. That's not really practical, right? Dogs get into stuff and cause trouble, especially if there are other dogs around. Or maybe your dog doesn't deal with crowds well. That's the best part. The solution to that problem is something you should do with your dog anyway. No, it's not to leave them in the car, they hate that. It's socialize. Dogs, like people, are social creatures. Dogs should be around other people and dogs. It makes them happier and healthier. With that in mind, it's important to socialize your dogs in the right setting. Socializing your dog with people is better done in calm, controlled situations. A get-together with friends or a movie night? Best to avoid the neighborhood birthday party full of 12-year-olds until you're sure your dog can handle the noise and the stress. And when you're sure you can too, for that matter. For socializing dogs with dogs, a leashless dog park is a great place to let your dog run around and play. It's important to remember to still supervise your dog in these situations until you know how they will react. But your dog will most likely be happy with the opportunity to make friends. But even with all the work you can put into properly socializing your dog, there are sadly places dogs can't go. This means you will have to leave them home sometimes, no matter how hard they push their nose against the glass. Sad but true. The good news is there are things that can be done to reduce the stress of dogs when they're left home alone. Things that your dog will enjoy a lot. I was actually a little incredulous about this, but it turns out that dogs do genuinely enjoy watching television. They find it relaxing and stimulating. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go out and get one of those programs they specifically made for dogs. It wouldn't hurt, and some of them are kind of fun, but they aren't required for your dog to enjoy his television viewing experience. Dogs actually don't see the same way we do, so their perception of the screen is much different. Anything with consistent sound and motion will make your dog happy. You'll just want to make sure the volume is at a comfortable level and to avoid anything extremely distressing, such as loud or sudden noises. Some of my friends like to use old cartoons, but you could always let your dog pick. Sort of following that same idea, dogs actually really enjoy music. We know that dogs are stimulated mentally and emotionally by music, 
They just have slightly different tastes than people. Dogs tend to prefer singing and mouth sounds, that sort of stuff. Maybe an acoustic guitar album or even an a cappella group might be something your dog will enjoy. Honestly, it's most recommended that you sing, too, and sometimes with your dog. They like socializing with you, and believe it or not, chances are your dog really genuinely enjoys your singing. In case you haven't picked up on the theme being established so far here, your dog's real number one favorite thing in the whole world is you. Yes, your dog really loves you, everything about you, seeing you every day and hearing your voice. But interestingly enough, your dog's favorite thing about you is your smell. Dogs communicate a lot through smell. That's how they greet one another or explore their world. This is also why it's very common for your dog to rifle through your dirty laundry and steal the socks or underwear that have been in there the longest. While you don't have to part with your tidy whities per se, one of the best ways you can give your dog some peace of mind while you're out of the house is to give them something that smells like you. A well-worn sweatshirt or frequently used blanket in their crate or on their bed will give them a lot of peace of mind while you're gone. If you're used to your dog going absolutely wild when you get home, don't be surprised to find them curled up and sleeping on top of your old college hoodie when you try this. Much like with the television and the music, dogs like things that stimulate them. A bored dog is an unhappy dog, which I think surprises no one. What may surprise you is this next idea, a puzzle feeder. Dogs like being challenged by their food, despite what may seem like evidence to the contrary. And having to think for their kibble or treat will make it feel like that much more of a reward. These types of toys and feeders have gotten pretty popular and should be easy to find. But I recommend a little research with this one, as the type of dog you have can be a big factor. If your dog is big enough to tear the puzzle apart to get to the food, well, that really isn't much of a puzzle, is it? Another canine activity that is far underutilized as a regular dog activity is swimming. I get it, swimming isn't always accessible depending on the area you live in, but if you have the chance to take your dog swimming, you definitely should. Dogs are built for the water, and swimming can provide a lot of fun and exercise for your dog. The stimulation they get by changing their exercise environment from their standard walk is also good for their brains as much as their body. Dogs that get to experience lots of different environments actually have healthier minds in old age. Not to mention that it's also good for you too, and swimming with your dog becomes a fun and healthy activity for both of you. There. Now you can't say I don't have the best interests of my viewers in mind. Wait, was anyone saying that? So there you have it. Stuff that your dog will love, that you will love doing for your dog, that your dog will love doing with you, and that's it. I love dogs, in case you couldn't tell. If you have any suggestions of other activities that dogs will love or just stories about dogs loving to do anything, then feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos about happy and healthy dog ownership, and we can't wait to hear from you about your happy and good good boys.